So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the NL5 US uh, launch webinar. I'm uh, Vincent Cronod, business manager at Axiom Optics, and uh, here is also uh, Peter Drent, founder and uh, sales and marketing manager at Confocal NL, and uh, Jeroen Cole, product application specialist at Confocal NL. Today we are introducing the NL5, uh, and we'll show you how it's a new approach for high-speed Confocal imaging. So here's today's outline. I'm going to do a very quick introduction of uh, Axiom Optics, and then I'm going to give the hand to Peter, who is going to uh, introduce Confocal NL and the NL5 system. And then Yoon is going to run you th through some application examples, uh, give you the highlights of the system, and run a live demo. At the end, we're going to have a question and answer session. So please stay tuned. And if you have any questions, you can write them down in the chat. We'll try to answer them during the webinar, and we'll be happy to answer them uh, after the webinar. So to start with, um, Axiom Optics is a distributor of um, high-end scientific instrumentation. Uh, I'm part of the microscopy business unit as Philip and Lauren, our marketing specialist. In microscopy, we offer high-end uh, add-ons systems. So obviously, um, we work uh, with uh, Confocal.nl, we offer the Rescan Confocal microscope that you probably have heard of in the past. Uh, and today, we're going to focus on the, their new system, the NL5. But we also work with Lambert's instrument, we offer a film system, camera-based film system, uh, with Abelite and Imaginotic, who specializes in uh, single molecule localization, localization microscopy, and with Impatux, who offer an optical tweezers and force measurement platform. If you want to hear more about this product, I'll be happy to uh, give you more information after the webinar. And so now I'm going to give the hand to Peter. Peter. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, everybody here, you know, I really welcome you to uh, continue the journey with us. So we as a company started out with the uh, the RCM product and the RCM product focuses on uh, resolution and on new product, the NL5 will focus on speed. So today I want to start with uh, going a little bit back to the history. You know, what is about fast imaging? Fast imaging from focal microscopes in the market. They are not new, no, they are around, around for a while. And you have different flavors. You have uh, the spinning disk systems, you have uh, the resonance scanners, there are systems with uh, multiple beams, and there are the line scanners. And we have to look at the detector because I always say of the convocal microscope, if you want to work in fluorescence, you want to work with minimum light exposure, with low phototoxicity, so you want to use the most sensitive detectors. And as we speak, the camera is the most sensitive. And most more sensitive than photomultiplier tubes used by the resonance scanners. The spinning disk systems use the, uh, the cameras. Multiple beam systems, they have mixtures. Some have cameras, some have not. And the line systems as well. So to look at them, you know, there, there are very, very good systems and uh, some of them especially the Okugawa, I think it's, uh, it's very extremely successful over the years. It's not a new technology, it's an older technology. It can go very, very fast. But the spinning disk systems have one, one problem. They go, when they go deeper, they all show the problem of pinhole crossover. So which means they are excellent for living cells and when they are flat, but if you have something deeper, like an organoid, they, they struggle to get good image quality while going deep. And also, because of the design of the spinning disk, they all need some, what I call, help to create uniformity of the field. Resonant technology is, uh, is in fact, uh, not new anymore. It's, uh, it's a little bit older. Uh, in fact, it is uh, more older than here because uh, in 1993, Nikon already uh, 
introduce a resonance system called the RCM8000, which was a collaboration with uh, Roger Chen. This was the commercialization of Roger Chen's uh, laboratory system, but at that time already a resonance system. Since then, Nikon uh, introduced uh, 10 generations of different resonance systems. Uh, Nikon is not unique, like I made the same journey. No, it's, it's robust, good technology, but it's PMT based. So it is not as sensitive as the spinning disk system. This is an example of uh, a multiple beam system. This is uh, the Brücker Optera. It, it had many, many names uh, before, but the design is more or less the same. It's uh, one beam that it is uh, multiplied by, I believe, 64 beams, and all these 64 beams go together fast over the, over the specimen. But it uses very high laser power. Another system was made by Zeiss. This was uh, in the mid 80s. They, they, they introduced this system called the Five Life, LSM Five Life. And what they did here it's, it was a challenge. They wanted to design a, a fast system for lifestyle microscopy, and they put they put some challenging challenging tasks. And one of them is that they wanted to have reach a frame rate of 120 frames per second. Now, to do so, they needed to have more laser power. And I believe the design used a little bit uh, too much laser power because uh, it was uh, quickly nicknamed as the five bleach. So if you go older, even, even older than that, this is 80s. This is uh, Biorad. This is the uh, DVC-250, the view scan. And why it was called view scan is because you could look into the convocal image. So by eye, you could see the convocal image and you could record the convocal image with the camera. So of all these strategies, of all these options that we have, what, what do you think we did? Before I start explaining the technology, uh, we will show you a, uh, a real data set recorded with uh, our new system, recorded with the NL5. So this is a Z stack. So here actually we are acquiring an image and stepping the microscope, acquiring an image and stepping the microscope, acquiring an image and stepping the microscope. And you can see in the top right corner, you can see the speed that we are doing this. This is a Z stack of 90 microns. It's so good here, let's do it again. 90 microns. We go very fast through it. And please observe the image quality while going deep. Okay, what is the, the technology we use for this? This is also not new. Maybe some of you know uh, Colin Shepard. Colin Shepard, uh, yeah, I think everything in, in convocal microscopy, uh, he was the first to uh, publicize. So in, uh, in mid 80s already, he wrote a chapter in a book about convocal microscopes with slit apertures. And uh, maybe you know that we are from Amsterdam. Actually, we are a child, a spin-off of the University of Amsterdam. And at the University of Amsterdam, Professor Brakenhoff was working. Maybe you remember the name. Professor Brakenhoff is still the organizer of the conference focus on microscopy. And in the 90s, in the early 90s, he worked together with the American company, Meridian, to uh, develop the inside convocal microscope. And this convocal microscope is really a very, very smart design. I believe in the next slide, yes. Excuse me for the very bad or the low resolution image, but everything you can find back from this time on Google has, is not available in high resolution. Okay, let me try to explain to you. Have a look at the laser. The laser is coupled in by fiber, okay? And then you can see the laser in the blue color coming into the optical carousel, dichroic mirror, dichroic mirror. Then it hits the scanning mirror, okay? It is the scanning mirror and is deflected downside. Okay, the microscope is down. 
Then the emission light is depicted here in green, comes up, okay, by the same side of the mirror, goes into the optical carousel, okay, dichroic mirror of a mirror, then there's a variable slit, there's another mirror, 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 and then the same light hits the back side of the scanning mirror and it sends the information up to be viewed or to be recorded by camera. Very excellent design, very unique, very, I, I would say, simple, yeah. and simple is a compliment. It uses one scanning mirror from both sides. And it was available for inverted microscope, for upright microscope. Maybe you can see here, at that time, we were still using the argon krypton laser. The three lines. But I'm a little bit sorry to say, uh, although the system and design was good, uh, commercially it, it, it failed. All of these, all of the, this, the scanners, the slit scanners that I've showed you, they failed because the resolution was not good enough. You know, remember the cameras we were using at that time. There, there were no, no scientific CMOS cameras. There were no EMCCD cameras. You know, you had very, very simple CMOS CCD chips, which lacked the sensitivity. They didn't have the extreme sensitivity. And mostly you could record the images and maybe you could record them on videotape but there was nothing at the digital infrastructure to bring them into the computer. Uh, deconvolution was not available. Yeah, you could do a deconvolution of a single image, which took, took you an, an overnight. So I think because of the inf this infrastructure and cameras, and resolution and sensitivity, these systems failed. But all of this has changed. You know, think about how the world of cameras change, how the world of lasers change, how the world of, of, of computing changed, and deconvolution changed. And now I'm happy that we can repack that slit scanning technology in a, in a modern format and bring it to the market. This is NL5. NL5, you can see, is operated also, is, uses a camera's detector. You know, NL5 is designed to work at a fixed scanning speed, full frame of 25 frames per second. NL5 uses one digital scanner. You know, I taught you about the, uh, the Meridian design, front side, back side. So we use two zones on the scanner. And we use a different position of the scanner to utilize this, the scanner to go into a bypass mode. So actually, the scanner has three functions to direct the excitation light, to direct the emission light, and to direct the whole light bypassing. Very smart modern design. So the system has 2K by 2K resolution at 25 frames per second. And uh, this is a, a bold statement, but uh, we have done a side-by-side -side comparison against spinning disk, and against the most well-known spinning disk. And we found out, and you can download uh, our experiment as a white paper, that NL5 is 16 times brighter, how we measured it, as the spinning disk system. 16 times. Also, I'm happy to inform you that uh, we work together with the microvolution, and you can imagine uh, the NL5 is not using a pinhole, but it's using a slit. And that slit creates a special PSF. And that PSF is now already integrated in the uh, microvolution, deconvolution software. And at 25 frames per second, at 2K by 2K, we can do a live deconvolution. So here you can be, uh, see this, the size comparison. On the left side, you see the RCM2, and on the right side, you can see NL5. NL5 is compact. It can be mounted on the microscope on the left side and the right board. Okay? 
It can be used with inverted microscopes and it can be used with upright microscopes. Okay, so all of that information about the different systems, I, I try to put in this uh, chart. And how does NL5 compare to these systems? You know, I believe speed-wise, NL5 is same as spinning disk systems, same as resonance system. The five life was faster, and the multiple beam systems, I think uh, also the, the worker system is faster, or can be faster. Some of the spinning disk systems also can be faster when we sacrifice the field of view. Sensitivity, sensitivity is determined by the camera, by the detector. You know, the, the, the Zeiss Life was using a special line detector, which was not sensitive. The resin system used the PMTs that are not sensitive. The spinning disks and the multiple beam systems, they go with cameras, so they are sensitive. But if we compare it to the NL5 optical design, I believe the optical design of uh, the NL5 is more light efficient. And we have proved that in the side by side uh, comparison with the spinning disk. Now, X, Y, and Z resolution together, I think uh, resonant, multiple, and size line are the same. Spinning disk, uh, I ordered a little bit lower because uh, they have the pinhole crossover problem. NL5 doesn't have that. Okay. And then I think the most important. <laughs> parameter for, for you as microscopists, for you as biologists. We don't want to put too much light on the cells, especially on the living cells. We want to reduce phototoxicity. Okay. So spinning disk systems uh, work with lasers. Some use LEDs. Sometimes LEDs are powered at one watt, so I, I'm wondering why are we using a laser, an LED? The, the multiple systems also using uh, cameras. So I believe it's better in phototoxicity, reduction of phototoxicity as a spinning disk. But the NL5 has to slip in home, is camera based, has the most efficient optical path. So I believe of all systems in the market, NL5 is best reducing phototoxicity. Okay, so now as a company, we are really happy. You know, we, are now, we are almost six years old and uh, you know, we have three products on the market, RCM1 and RCM2, and now NL5. They're all camera based. Uh, RCM is, is focused on resolution as the rescan principle. So we can reach 120 nanometer resolution with RCM. With NL5, it's convocal. So after deconvolution, we can reach 170 nanometer resolution. The field of view, RCM1 was optimized for 60 and 100 X. RCM2 can work with 40 X, it's optimized for 40 X. Our NL5 is also optimized for 40 X. And because it's not using the rescanning principle, it has a larger field of view of 330 by 330 micrometers at the 40 X. The RCM1 uses traditional analog scanners, so we call them open loop. RCM2 and NL5 are using the same digital scanner. Okay. So this is kind of unique. The digital scanner runs in the RCM2 up uh, two frames per second, which is two times faster than the RCM1. But in our NL5, because we use the line, the whole line to excite, we run at 25 frames per second. Software-wise, we had an API integration for RCM1 in Micromanager and Nice Elements and Velocity. With RCM2, because of the digital uh, design of the scanners, we can now operate in, in most of the software packages via a hardware trigger. In NL5, this will be uh, happening as well. I cannot confirm it runs in Nice Elements, and we are working on uh, Zen and LASX and CellSense. So the integration to the uh, computer is via USB connection. And like I said, PSF deconvolution is available 
already known for microevolution for NL5. Bypass mode in RCM is, uh, is available, but manual. And because we use the special uh, scanner setting, the scanner angle, it's motorized by the scanner. So here you can see how NL5 ranges between our products. So unique features of NL5, you know, it's a single digital scanner, same as RCM2, better resolution while going deeper, 16 times brighter than spinning disk, 170 nanometer resolution. We have various, various software options, extreme sensitivity ensures low phototoxicity. This is really important. And it is compact and it's very easy to use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter, for the for the introduction. I will take over from here. Uh, so I'll be talking about the uh, applications of NO5, and right after I will take you to the live demo. Okay, so the NO5, as, as Peter explained, is capable of running at 25 frames 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 per second. So that allows you to really study uh, fast cell dynamics with very low phototoxicity. So here I will show you an example of a uh, living HeLa cell. And this is uh, a 3D volume, which we re recorded over time. So you can see here the actin staining in the HeLa cell, and you can see this Philopodia moving around. Uh, I will play the movie again. No worries. So this really allows you to study these dynamics in real time in 3D with low phototoxicity. Okay. We can do very long-term live cell imaging as well. So this will show you an example of uh, a zebra fish, which was imaged uh, 24 hours post fertilization. And then for a full day, we recorded uh, Every 10 minutes, a Z-Stack, and every Z-Stack had over 500 slices. And you can see here the development of the, the blood vessels of the zebrafish. I'll play it again. You can see the development of, uh, of the vessels in the heart, in the brain, and in the, in the tail section as well. If we would have used too much light, we would definitely interfere with such a, with such a process. Uh, and therefore, uh, you would not be able to study it if there is too much light. So having a really low light is very important here. OK, so uh, Peter mentioned this as well a couple of times during his presentation. Uh, the NL5 is really suitable for 3D imaging. And this you can extend to organoids, zebrafish, uh, embryos, 3D cultures, and hydrogels, all kinds of applications. Um, typically, uh, spinning disk systems are used here, but they have the problem of pinhole crosstalk. Uh, because the NL5 uses a single slit, uh, we don't have such a problem. And therefore, we have better images while going deep. And the next slides will show that. So here you can see. Um, the Volvox uh, specimen that was shown earlier at uh, 20 microns in. Uh, and well, the image quality compared to spinning disk, uh, there's not a lot of difference. Maybe the spinning disk is a bit sharper here and there. But if you go deeper, so this is at 60 micrometers after the cover slip, you start to see this typical issue of uh, pinhole crosstalk where you see haze occurring in the image. Um, also, we measured here the, the laser power. So how much uh, laser light was used to capture this image versus the NL5. And you can see that there is a factor 16 difference here. So even though the contrast in NL5 is higher, we use only a 16th of the amount of light that was used to capture the spinning disk uh, image. And of course, when you go deeper than uh, the problem becomes more evident. So basically, the NL5 gives you uh, pretty good image quality throughout the sample. 
uh, and the spinning disc starts to lose the resolution and, and, and contrast once you go deeper. Okay, so we also talked about uh, deconvolution. Uh, so this shows you the, the performance of deconvolution. So if you are, if you, uh, are not happy yet with the raw image quality of NL5, you can always perform deconvolution and you can see that that drastically increases the uh, signal to noise ratio and uh, resolution. I will also demonstrate this during the live demo in a bit. Then we can also do very fast uh, switching of, of, of multiple colors. So this facilitates, for example, high content screening applications where you want to screen multiple wells inside the 96 well plate um, and quickly take Z-stacks of, of multiple positions inside these wells. So just to give you an example, uh, this is, uh, these are UFAC cells. I have the same cells actually during the demo and they were stained for actin filaments, tubulin and DNA. So you can nicely see the development over time. And you could do this inside multiple wells with different conditions of a, of a certain drug, for example. OK. So that brings me to the uh, summary of, of, of this uh, part. Uh, so NL5 is a high resolution convocal microscope. It reaches 240 nanometers in the raw data and up to 170 in the deconvolved. Uh, we can get a very high sensitivity. So using the modern cameras, we can go up to 95% quantum efficiency. Uh, it has a fast scanning speed, 25 frames per second for the full frame. And it is very compact and easy to use, an excellent add-on for any microscope, actually. Um, it can be on the left board, but also on the right board. And we can also mount it on upright systems. So you can uh, convert your existing research microscope into a fast convocal scanning system, which is ideal for uh, 3D live cell imaging. OK, so I want to take the opportunity to move to the demo from here. So you should be able to see my screen. Uh, the demo I will be performing inside uh, MicroManager, which is uh, an open source microscopy software, uh, able to control any microscope and camera. Uh, so it's very, it has a, a wide range of, uh, of, uh, of, of different hardware that is supported. Um, so going over the buttons, here is snap and live. So to get one image or a stream of images from the camera and then under the multi D button here, you can program Z stacks, multicolor, time lapse, uh, or any combination of that. Then, if we go to the right hand side over here, you can see the controls. So, we have uh, a control for the channel. So, I could go, for example, first in the in the bypass mode and. Uh, find uh, my region of interest so this is uh these are living cells that i have here on the stage you can see this is an actin staining and well the bypass mode just allows you to quickly scan the sample find uh, a good region of interest and then you can start to use the high resolution confocal mode so i found a nice cell here and now we can switch to the laser for excitation oops and then my cell is just outside the field of view so i'll move it in so you can see me now going through the focus and i'll also be able to show you different stainings so this will be the tubulin staining and we have a dna staining as well i will increase the power a bit to have a more brighter image um, and from here we can start to define uh, 
a Z stack. So I can go in the multi-dimensional acquisition window, which is here. And then we can say, okay, I want to do, let's say 10 time points with a 30 second interval. And then I want to image a stack, which is three microns in thickness with a 200 nanometer step. And then uh, these three channels will be used for excitation and the data will be saved here. Um, now on the back end, I also have microvolution running. So this software will automatically deconvolve the images that will come in and that will really improve the image quality. So when I once I hit acquire here, it should start recording the data. And there is my deconvolved data coming in already. And the next uh, stack is being made as we speak. So this now allows me to focus a bit more on the uh, on the imaging. So once I have set my lookup table such that the image looks nice, So and this is now being done in real time. So you can see the real power here of, of this technology is that you can do fast acquisition and using uh, the, the modern sensitive cameras and the fast computers, we can do this deconvolution on the fly. And uh, both data sets will also be saved. So I don't have to worry about uh, data getting lost anywhere. So, and of course, this is a living specimen. So you can see here already some uh, nice motion going on. So you can, for example, oops, you can zoom in onto this part here. And then we can see the actin filaments displaying uh, some kind of uh, retraction here, but also a new filament appearing here. So the cell is continuously in motion. And when we would image this for you know, overnight or even, even longer than that, then uh, we probably will be able to spot several mitotic events happening as well. So with this, uh, I would like to end the demo and uh, I'm open to take any questions. Thank you, Jeroen. Uh, it was a really nice demo. So if you have any questions, this is the time to ask them. As of now, we don't have questions, but let's wait maybe a couple of minutes. Jeroen, Jeroen I have a request. Of can course. you show the corners? Of, can, can you show the corners of the image? Show the evenings? Yeah, that's a very good uh, remark. So, so uh, one important aspect of, uh, of 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 microscopy is, for example, is is of course how you know, how uniform is your image? Um, so I will stop my uh, acquisition here and show that. So is the image intensity in the center the same as in the edges? That's very important because this will allow you to do uh, stitching. Uh, it will allow you to do a, a much better quantification of the signal. So. Spinning disk microscopes, for example, they can suffer from that. And we know that from the field. So if I move this cell, if, if you focus on this cell here and I move it over the field of view, so inside the corners, you can see that the intensity stays pretty much the same. And that is important because if you don't have this, uh, you will get uh, problems using stitching and you will not be able to quantify the signal as, as good. So having a uniform image is something that we really 
uh, focused on a lot in the production of this uh, convocal microscope. Okay. So is there any other questions? No, we still don't have questions. So I think this was very clear. Okay. So if we don't have any questions, I think we'll wrap up the webinar. Let's just wait maybe 10 seconds. Last chance. And if you navigate to the uh, right hand side, you can see there's an offer. So if you click on that offer, it will take you to the Axiom website. Okay, well, thank you uh, so much, Peter, for the presentation and Jeroen for the demo. Uh, if you have any questions in the future, you can reach out to us, whether to us at Axiom Optics if you are in the US or to uh, Peter and Jeroen if you are anywhere else. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.